Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. It's the 24th of January. Just a few updates this week, but across a pretty broad range of areas. I'm just checking, yes, I'm actually recording this week. New videos this week. So we're continuing the journey of the Azure Masterclass. So the governance uh, module of the Masterclass uh, completely updated and re-recorded. And it was this week, the 300,000 subscriber Ask Me Anything session. So that is now available to watch if you just very informal, just kind of Q&A type thing, but it's up there if you wanted to see it. So on to what's new, and it's all miscellaneous this week. So the first one, Arcbox has a 2025 update. So remember, Arcbox is that solution that has all the various parts related to Arc, which extends the Azure control plane to things outside of Azure and then brings various capabilities with it. And it has a number of different persona capabilities that you can select. So with this update, Windows Server 2025 is now utilized for the ArcBox client VM. So that's the VM that's actually deployed onto Azure and then houses the rest of the nested components. So that's now a Windows Server 2025 OS runs inside that Azure VM. Then it has a nested Windows Server 2025 VM to help you evaluate the various Windows Server 2025 capabilities, which also means some of the 2025 benefits. So it has built-in WinGet, uh, built-in Windows Terminal, and things like that. They also took the opportunity to add some cost optimization. So it will automatically shut down the VM by default. You have an option to use spot pricing now. Remember, spot is the spare capacity available in Azure. You have the chance of being kind of kicked out if a regular Pago needs it, but you get a significant discount. And it also shifts to using the new premium SSD V2, which has a better price to performance because you can separately tweak the capacity, the IOPS and the throughput. So hey, that is now available for you. Azure landing zones provide best practice deployments for the various components for your Azure structure. And we can use the portal, we can use Bicep, which is Azure specific and Terraform with those accelerators. Now, Azure verified modules provide complete workloads that contain all of the resources, the parameters required for it to be usable that is maintained by Microsoft people. So what this is saying is the Azure Landing Zone Terraform deployment option now leverages the Azure verified modules. And they did say that a bicep version using Azure verified modules is on the roadmap for later this year. So this replaces the old CAF enterprise scale module for Terraform. So it's just giving you a, a better set of capabilities. Azure Confidential Ledger now has ISO 27001 certification. Remember, Confidential Ledger is built on blockchain. So that gives you that tamper-proof, unstructured data store that is backed by cryptographically verifiable evidence for every transaction. It runs in a trusted execution environment, so I get encryption at rest, encryption in transit, encryption at use. So what we now have is with the 27001 certification, that's really a key standard that is internationally recognized related to the managing and protection of your information assets. That gives you more assurance to actually go and use that. API Center now has integration with the Amazon API Gateway. So remember, API Center is that great maybe development time capability that gives me the ability to inventory, uh, document, discover all of the APIs your organization uses, whether they are Azure based or not. Now it does have integration with the Azure API Gateway, which is more of a runtime capability to make APIs available. So it will go and synchronize and import the APIs from the Azure API Gateway. Well, now I have that same ability to import and synchronize APIs that I have in my Amazon API Gateway to give me that nice centralized view of everything I have in my environment. There's some new identity score recommendations for Entra. So the Entra identity score is a really nice way to track over time my identity posture. So the maturity is my score improving as I take various actions. And what they've done is added a number of new recommendations across a number of key areas. So 
hey, you need MFA for admin roles. Ensure users can complete MFA. Block legacy authentication. Don't expire password. Uh, protect users with sign-in risk and user risk. Controls around consent for unreliable applications. Use password hash sync. Have more than one global admin. Make sure you have self-service password reset enabled. So those are all now recommendations. It will help guide you and will impact your overall identity score. And then for the Azure OpenAI services new to East US 2 and Sweden Central, you now have the GPT 4.0 real-time um, capability. It's the 2024-12-17 API. So that is all about real-time audio interactions. There's new voices, there's new prompt caching, and there's also a new GPT 4.0 audio preview in the same regions for audio generation, um, audio interactions, audio analysis. So lots of audio focused things there. And that was it. I told you it was a pretty quick update. As always, I hope that was useful. And until the next video, you take care.